Well, um, thanks everybody. My name is Sam Brady and i um, the proud partner of Brian Mitzer. Tonight is about recognizing a gentleman who's given 50 years of his life to his vocation, to the job he loves, uh, to the well-being of his clients, and to the well-being of his colleagues. Brian William Goodson, BWK, BK. <laughs> Bry, the Bry guy, the BK Broiler. <laughs> Brian has enjoyed many successes throughout his life as a young city councillor when he first came back to town as a financial advisor, achieving annual recognition as an advisor in the top 10% of all firm advisors across Canada, all from little old Belleville. Becoming a vice, first place vice president, becoming a director, being recognized as a Merrill Lynch senator, it is very easy to be impressed. Well, I've known the Nitsen family my whole life. My family has always had a close connection to the Nitsons, or the nudies as we affectionately knew them. Brian and Lynn uh, are dear friends of my mom and dad, and we're part of their long running gourmet club. We've done numerous family trips together, usually skiing or boating, but not surprisingly, I count the Nooks and kids and their spouses among my very best friends. <laughs> Sorry, if anybody doesn't know, I have a propensity to cry whenever I get <laughs> Oh, there's the support, there we go. And Lynn and Brian are surrogate parent figures. Let's just say, there's a monumental amount of water under the Nixon Brady Bridge. <laughs> oh, and I might have cracked and broken the bridge a few times along the way, too. Just the diving board. Just the diving board. <laughs> I, I famously broken a few Nixon items. I spent a great deal of time with the Nixons growing up, whether it's sleepovers, swim parties, you name it, I was usually around. I even got forced to go to Sunday school with the Nixons at Bridge Street United after a Saturday sleepover. <laughs> what I recall most vividly is walking past the Knudsen house on my way to an early morning band or basketball practice at BCI. Brian's light in his office was always on. A thin blue haze of cigar smoke heavy in the air, <laughs> even at 6.30 in the morning. Brian loved his work. And Brian's daughter, as, as Brian's daughter Allison noted to me, work is a huge part of my dad's life and his sense of self. And I always knew where to find him. He's, he's at the office. Now there are cell phones, and my dad conveniently keeps his turned off. <laughs> I have to look back over my career and my successes, and I have to thank Brian for many, many things. First, um, for being a reference on my resumes as I applied to various jobs and roles in the financial industry. Do you want to call them? Uh, while I was at university, but eager to get into my chosen field focus of finance, not public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting callbacks from big wigs at Midland Wallman, from the options desk, from the trading desk, from corporate finance to discuss my career objectives and trajectory. And I can sure all of you these calls were based on Brian's endorsement not on my calculus marks. <laughs> and guess what? I landed a summer job, which turned into my career. I thank you for it. As an aside, <laughs> as an aside, there's humor in here. I promise I won't drag us all down. I have to thank Brian for bailing me out of a terribly embarrassing situation. We were skiing at Tromblon with some family friends, and I offered stupidly to buy a round of drinks for a bunch of industry guys at the bar. <laughs> As a young advisor, let's just say my financial picture was less than perfect, and my credit card declined. <laughs> I can still feel the heat and the sting of how embarrassing that was. But Brian grabbed the bill and handed it to our mutual fund rep, which was amazing. <laughs> It was a small thing, but it meant the world to me. Fake it until you make it, Sammy. 
<laughs> I also have to thank Brian for reaching out to me in 1999 and beginning our discussions to return to Belleville and join his team as a partner. At the time, Brian was 52 and looking to expand out his team in order to provide better and more advice to his service uh, and service to his clients. Brian was known at Midland Wallen to be the top advisor across Canada. But Brian was thinking ahead, thinking down the line to when he wanted to retire and putting a succession plan in place. As a young advisor in Toronto, I was doing okay and thought I had the colloquial bull by the horns. I was about to be married and Anne-Marie and I had to think long and hard before making this big move to come to Belleville and join partnership, as attractive as the offer was. And am I ever glad that we did. We arrived in Belleville in October of 2000 in the midst of the tech bubble bursting. And as a young overconfident advisor, uh, this 50% equity market correction was all new to me. But Brian's sizable business and his wonderful clients provided so much needed stability and gray hair that was missing from my own, at least it was missing at the time. <laughs> Nine years later, we went through the financial crisis together. And it's not like Brian and I together causing all this, I promise. <laughs> and after a literally, uh, literally me crushing my own teeth, my hair turning gray, it falling out, and more signs of internalized stresses, we managed our way through it, hopefully wearing most of the worry for our clients by being there for them during the financial market disruptions. Brian sets an incredible example. He's always been a leader in our organization, and that's both locally and nationally, as a top advisor. He was an innovator, early to adapt to changes and material shifts in our business, allowing his business to expand and grow while other advisors stuck in their old ways didn't. And as a mentor, opening up to me and eventually Greg and Ian to show us the ropes. During a friend's recent visit, just a few short days ago, uh, Neil relayed a story that was told to him by his own parents. He lives in Vancouver, his parents live in Nova Scotia, and he just brought this story up. Um, they're friends of a client. And the story was about Brian Newton in his early career. The client was an elderly gentleman. He had an investment for portfolio that he managed under the advice and care of Brian and successfully grew the account to a sizable amount. When the client fell ill and was in a hospital, Brian visited him regularly, taking the time to talk and to just let him know that he was in good hands and he didn't worry about anything. The client wasn't the biggest or the most important client, as they say, but Brian cared and it shows. Brian brought peace of mind, as great advisors do. And a caring friend does that for those that matter most. Excuse me. Over my 19 years with Brian, I've seen this played out so many, many times. Visits to homes, nursing facilities, and hospitals. We have young clients too, but... You know. <laughs> Sometimes to share with clients how their portfolios are doing. Sometimes just to catch up. Sometimes to help a client move something heavy for move room A to B. And sometimes, uh, of course, just an awesome lunch or a dinner with clients who become lifelong friends. It's what a great advisor does with his clients. I thank Brian for this sterling example of client relationships. It's a big reason why we enjoy the clientele we do with generations of clients. We actually deal with the grandchildren of clients who now have their own great-grandchildren investing with our group. Mm -hmm. And finally, I also have to acknowledge Brian and the wonderful gift he's given me, which is time. During our time as business partners since 2000, Brian and the rest of the team have been so generous in giving me the time and flexibility to pursue my passions within the community. Whether it was immersing myself in Rotary, organizing reunions, or raising funds for local parks, or whatever stupid thing I had going on, Brian was always encouraging and supporting my community work. When I first came back to town, it was Brian who encouraged my involvement in Rotary, 
with Festival of Trees and the Cooney Arts Council and getting out in front in our community with support and energy. I definitely know at some point in the past 19 years, there's been many second guesses by Brian for this initial encouragement. <laughs> but suffice it to say, without Brian, Sandra, and Gord, and Greg, and now Ian, and Lynn, and Sherry, my work family, I've never been able to do these things that I so enjoy. So to all of you, and especially Brian, who created this family, thank you so very much. With that, I'm almost done. <laughs> Just a few more sniffles. <laughs> On behalf of the entire work family, I'd like to present Brian with two gifts. So what do you give the man who has everything? or has at least owned three of the things that you're trying to give him over his lifetime. <laughs> what we've chosen to give Brian is a sign of our gratitude, both a reflection of our thanks. The first is to remind Brian to relax and enjoy retirement. In Florida, at the cottage, out east with Lynn's family, without any know your client forms or having to check in to see who he has to call today, just to travel more, to do more things he loves, and to do it with the people he loves doing it with. Honestly, he's nearly 73 and we thought he'd never leave. <laughs> Sims Dodgel, who was a colleague of Brian's, was 103, so you never know. The gift is not quite a kick in the arse on the way out the door, but almost. For those that can't see, it's it's a monogrammed luggage. <laughs> and second, an ongoing legacy to remind Brian and the community of the lasting impact he's had on all of us. To the financial success of our clients, to the development and growth of our work colleagues and our families, to the broader community as a volunteer, a sponsor, and a donor to so many worthy causes here in the greater Queen area. Our group is making a 10-year financial commitment to the Children's Foundation, serving Hastings, Northumberland, and Prince Edward counties. With this donation, Brian will be recognized with the title Guardian of Hope, and an endowed bursary will provide a local deserving student in financial need with a monetary gift toward the pursuit of their post-secondary education and career in commerce and business. More encouragement. Wow. As Brian encouraged all of his three successful kids to pursue business in school, and as he encouraged and inspired me to do the same, Brian will be encouraging more aspiring kids to do the same for years to come. Congratulations, Brian, and thank you so very, very much.